Last week we spoke of the number nines in South African rugby and the options that we have there. And I think Ryan, now that you're back, I wanted to discuss the the uh, the fly half options and and who's available for the box come June. You know, for me and what I think is that Hundred Pollard and Alton Yanchis must remain the two le leading candidates. You know, particularly Alton, I think he's hit some good form. Uh, last week we saw him really impressing in, in, in you know in that game there. Uh, Hundred Pollard, I think, has been a bit inconsistent at times, but generally I think he has still shown his experience that is slightly superior to the other guys we've you know we've got available. I disagree with you, Craig. I, like I think I think Alton's the oldest. Whole Alton thing is running its course now. Um, I think I tweeted during the to, during the test season last year, if, um, if I'm not mistaken. You know, I said that that he's been given an extended run in that side now. Um, I've always been a Andre Pollard guy. I think that he's got ev he ticks every box that we need um, for test fly for Springbok test fly. -off. Alton, for me, that thing has run its course. He's a good Super Rugby player. That's my view, and I don't think he'd ever be better than that. And that's fine. That's the, we kind of just have to accept that that no matter the type of form that Alton turns in with the Lions, it's not going to translate to the next level because he doesn't have the temperament required for that stage. So, so I mean, like I respect your view. I respect your view that Alton's a, like a good candidate and, and, he's, and he's certainly playing well in Super Rugby. But where, where do we draw the line and go, you know, we've given this kid enough chances now. It's time to look elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, I see your point, but you know, I'll counter with the fact that they're going to pick two fly halves um, those are the two guys in my opinion because beyond that, Damien Willemsa, I just think we've seen, uh, perhaps as we discussed also earlier um, in the year about the fact that he needs a little bit more time. I think he'll be better served going with the junior box um, to the to the you know the, yeah, the junior world cup in, in June, play there and then maybe come back into contention. But that brings in then obviously the, the issue of like where does Rob Dupree stand, right? Um, and, um, and I, at this point, I think he's a better back up to Damien than, than, what, uh, than what Alton is. Um, particularly from a goal kicking perspective, which is the best, he's the best of the rest in, um, in, in Super Rugby, in terms of goal kicking. Um, so, I mean, I don't know what you feel, what you feel uh, for, for Rob Dupree, but I think that's who, who Andre's backup should be. Yeah, I think, you know, I was going to mention Rob Dupree is certainly as the, the dark horse because as you, you rightly mentioned, his goal kicking is at 90%. He's only missed four kicks all season. I mean, that's quite remarkable. And, and, if, and if that is what uh, Rusty Rasmus places as the top priority, then certainly he could be in the plans. But for me right now, I think Hunter Pollard just ahead of the queue. And then depending uh, on, on what sort of uh, you know, brand of rugby Rusty wants to play, you'll probably then have to go, are you going for the goal kicker or are you going for the more maverick sort of player in Elton? And you raise an important point because we've come out of two years of Alistair Kutsia speaking about a, a, a complete revolution in the brand of rugby that um, the Springboks play. Um, you know, wanting to play more ball in hand type of rugby. I like, I hate that that whole concept. I'm a guy for pragmatic, um, for a pragmatic approach to to test rugby. I think it's what served the Springboks well at their peak, um, and whenever they've played well, they've adopted that style of play. And um, and in Hande Pollard and Rob Dupree, I think we've got um, the, the, the the kind of fulcrum to work around that tactical philosophy and I'm confident that Rassi will go that way if you look at the way that that Stormers team played that the Stormers team of 2010 played I know Kutsio was coach and Rassi was um, director of rugby there but I, we all know that, direct, that that Rassi was pulling the strings tactically you look at the way that Stormers team played when they made they got all the way to the final and they were beaten by one of the best Bulls teams in history I think um, that was a pragmatic tactical approach and this, this myth that New Zealand, um, that the All Blacks and New Zealand's um, premier teams play um, expansive rugby at the expense of all else is a bunch of bullshit as well. Tactically they kick as much as anyone in the competition. The difference is the execution of that kicks and then the kick chase. Um, so, so yeah, I hope we, I hope we move to a more pragmatic approach and, and put this this rubbish of expansive rugby behind us. And in that context, Andre and Rob Dupree for me are the guys. Yeah, I mean, uh, as we've just seen, it's still a very interesting talking point. But the one positive, surely, is that uh, it just looks a lot better in terms of our flower options compared to yeah. scrum hours, which I spoke of uh, uh, obviously yeah, last week. The crisis. And uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, the fact we haven't even mentioned Pat Lambie, who's playing overseas, probably. You know, it's actually a good thing. Yeah. Um, definitely options that they've got there. Yeah, I agree. Yeah.
But moving into the, the one prediction for, for the uh, weekend, because the Stormers and the, the Lions both have a bye, which leaves us with a big derby of the, the Sharks and the Bulls, and I think it will, will make for a really cracking game. Yeah. I mean, both teams have looked really good just of late. Sharks were uh, very impressive in New Zealand, very nearly knocked over the Hurricanes on their home patch. Yeah. The Bulls have just had a bye, but before that, they, you know, they comprehensively defeated the Stormers. Yeah. So I think it's going to be a very uh, tightly contested affair. Um, but for me, and I think an interesting point is that I heard after they lost to the Red was a big, big loss there. There were some harsh words spoken uh, behind the scenes. They decided to shake off the shackles. The forwards have stepped up. Uh, suddenly they're playing without fear. And I think just at home and, and with that, that confidence, uh, I think they're going to edge it 5-8. to eight. Yeah, I was gutted by that Kane's result for a number of different reasons. They would played so well up until up until that last, that, that last sort of quarter of the game. And then even with that last restart, they kicked it deep into the Canes 22. And effectively, that's where the Canes built the, built the try from, which was disappointing for me. So a more experienced Sharks team closed that game out. Um, and um, and it would be remiss of me not to give credit to the Hurricanes to, to keep pressing under those circumstances um, was, was, really, was really, really good. Um, but I think and I hate saying this because it's a sports cliche, there's, there, there were a lot of positives to take out of that, that Sharks performance. I thought they were excellent for 60 minutes in that game, they were excellent. Um, and, um, and they shut the Canes out defensively, sp specifically. Um, but then that inexperience just told and the lack of game management just told. But I do think that they'll have enough to beat the Bulls, particularly in Durban. I don't think the Bulls travel that well. Um, and, um, and overall, you know, it's a clash of kind of um, a kind of, st well, uh, not a clash of styles, but, but a, a two teams with a fairly similar style. Um, but I think the, the Sharks will cancel them out in all the key areas, particularly at the game line. Um, and then they'll, they'll do them, I think, by, by 7 to 10 in Durban. Yeah, I think worth bearing in mind is that the Lions are 11 points ahead at the top of the South African Conference. And just looking at it, you know, in that context as well, I just think the Sharks have a little bit more uh, hunger and determination, uh, perhaps a slightly more desperate side who, who needs that win, um, particularly playing at home. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Well, thanks, Ryan. Let's cool. hope for, for a good one on, on Saturday. Cool.